teachers. It was a wonderful journey whereby we really had a group of teachers who were very passionate and everything went well. They even now started training other teachers. To be honest, this project is a project that when you work with the teachers on a daily basis, you get to know the impact that the teachers are having in this. And it's exciting because when we say we train them, it is not it is the teachers themselves, the teacher trainers who were originally trained by ICDL that we have worked with closely to train fellow teachers. And that in itself is a big achievement because there's a sense of apathy in the system that teachers themselves may not be able to train fellow teachers. But this comes to actually um, showcase that there's a way we can work with the teachers and support them to actually successfully train their teachers. Some of the things that uh, I would say has contributed to the success that we've seen because in the first pilot that we tra they trained, we had over 85% success rate. Part of what I would say has contributed to that, and this is a key learning, one is as, as a teacher training team, we have worked very closely with them. The sense of inspiration that we've ensured that is there with the teachers, they felt supported, they felt cheered, and so they knew that we believed in them and we were expecting of them to go against the, the current narrative and actually showcase the teachers themselves could actually train fellow teachers successfully. The other thing that we did that was also important as per the feedback that we've got from the teachers is that alongside what the individual teacher trainers were going to do, we produced videos from, I would say, my desk that was addressing the teacher trainers and also addressing the teacher trainees, trying to rally them and and make them see the value of the training and help them um, depart from the thinking that they cannot learn from one another. Finally, the other thing that we, we did was to make the teachers see and the trainers also see that they were not supposed to be the only people who have the knowledge, but they were supposed to create an environment where the other teachers felt equally involved in the learning process. And so they would engender a lot of collaboration. So there was a lot of peer teaching, even across the teacher tra trainees amongst themselves. Today is an exciting day because we have just done the symbolic national launch for the 14 smart classrooms that we have rehabilitated and equipped across 14 districts in 14 schools. Each smart classroom is going to act as a training hub. And in each district, the smart classrooms will be used to train all the mathematics and science teachers. EMS is the leader in teaching, but we want to become a leader in studying or learning. That smart classroom, it will help us to, to reach our goal, which is uh, teaching and learning. Integration of ICT in education, it has a greater role in our system of teaching. It has already simplified our task. Today's launch for the smart classroom at ES Rutogwe is a good example of smart classrooms because Rwanda Education Board also is establishing smart classrooms in all schools. And AIMS has contributed a lot also by providing more smart classrooms. When we talk about smart classrooms, we are not only talking about the smartness as a, a physical smartness, but also what can happen in the, smart, in the classroom as smart. So the smart learning, smart teaching, and of course the smartness of equipment, furniture, which aims at improving the quality of education, where we see the learning achievement also increasing among students. So we see also uh, students learning in innovative way. And as you know that most of the people, especially girls, are afraid of uh, mathematics and science. They don't enroll in those subjects because they think it's very difficult. But I think the difficultness comes uh, because of the way you teach the subjects. So if you teach the subject in a more friendly way, it becomes more easier and more friendly. 
and attract more students. Uh, mathematics and science uh, really have a good, uh, a big role to play in the development of our country. I'm asking a question about uh, environmental degradation to air pollution. I know you are a leader in teaching, you, sp uh, you support mathematics and other science. I'm going to ask if you plan to look for the, the environmental degradation. It's our social responsibility as well. As we grow, you know, start using more technology, we also keep in mind that we are not putting a lot of dent on the environment. We try to, you know, find alternate resources renewable energy resources or resources to minimize use of plastic and all these things in our day-to-day -day activities. Through the smart classrooms, we will work with the stakeholders, in this case the teachers, the school administrators, and even the students to ensure, one, that the teachers um, can employ effective pedagogical skills while using ICT. That smart classroom given by MCTP, it's special. It's special with uh, different component, uh, how we use it, how uh, learners uh, are excited to use it, even teachers. Okay, right now we have uh, ownership about it. We try to manage it, to use it properly and effectively. As um, Dean of Studies, I try to make a table, how learners can use it, even teachers, different research. Our interest is not just in getting the teachers to be proficient in ICT, but also supporting them to then use the ICT effectively to support learning in their classrooms while teaching mathematics and science especially. I hope this will be you know, hugely beneficial, not only for the teachers, but for the students as well. Uh, learning new ways and new techniques, which are now the must-have skills, especially the ICTs. For these smart classrooms, I think the purpose is to enhance ICT and integrate into the teaching and learning practices, especially in mathematical sciences. And I think this is where uh, we are successful. I just saw the first uh, smart classroom, very impressive. Uh, students are all excited, very enthusiastic. And it gives a lot of hope that all these things will contribute significantly to the learning and teaching in future. As we launch this uh, smart classrooms, we're excited because we are not just looking forward to training the teachers and perhaps not just wondering whether we'll be able to successfully train the teachers, but as you may have, may have seen, the launch was also a graduation ceremony for our first um, pilot of teachers that we trained. We started training the teachers. It was a wonderful journey whereby we really had a group of teachers who were very passionate and everything went well. They even now started training other teachers. To be honest, this project is a project that when you work with the teachers on a daily basis, you get to know the impact that the teachers are having in this. And it's exciting because when we say we train them, it is, not, it is the teachers themselves, the teacher trainers who are originally trained by ICDL that we have worked with closely to train fellow teachers and that in itself is a big achievement because there's a sense of apathy in the system that teachers themselves may not be able to train fellow teachers but this comes to actually um, showcase that there's a way we can work with the teachers and support them to actually successfully train their teachers. Some of the things that uh, I would say has contributed to the success that we've seen because in the first pilot that we tra they trained, we had over 85% success rate. Part of what I would say has contributed to that, and this is a key learning, one is as, as a teacher trading team, we have worked very closely with them. The sense of inspiration that we've ensured that is there with the teachers, they felt supported, they felt cheered and so they knew that we believed in them and we were expecting of them to go against the, the current narrative and actually showcase the teachers themselves could actually train fellow teachers successfully. The other thing that we did that was also important as per the feedback that we got from the teachers is that alongside what the individual teacher trainers were going to do, we produced videos from, I would say, my desk that was addressing the teacher trainers and also addressing the teacher trainees, trying to rally them and, and make them see the value of the training and help them um, 
depart from the thinking that they cannot learn from one another. Finally, the other thing that we, we did was to make the teachers see and the trainers also see that they were not supposed to be the only people who have the knowledge, but they were supposed to create an environment where the other teachers felt equally involved in the learning process. And so they would engender a lot of collaboration. So there was a lot of peer teaching, even across the teacher tra trainees among themselves. Today is an exciting day because we have just done the symbolic national launch for the 14 smart classrooms that we have rehabilitated and equipped across 14 districts in 14 schools. Each smart classroom is going to act as a training hub. And in each district, the smart classrooms will be used to train all the mathematics and science teachers. Ems is their leader in teaching, but we want to become a leader in studying or learning. That smart classroom, it will help us to, to reach our goal, which is uh, teaching and learning. Integration of ICT in education, it has a greater role in our system of teaching. It has already simplified our task. Today's launch uh, for the smart classroom at ES Rutogwe is uh, a good example of smart classrooms because Rwanda Education Board also is establishing smart classrooms in all schools. And Ames has contributed a lot also by providing more smart classrooms. When we talk about smart classrooms, we are not only talking about the smartness as a, a physical smartness, but also what can happen in the, smart, in the classroom as smart. So the smart learning, smart teaching, and of course the smartness of equipment, furniture, which aims at improving the quality of education, where we see the learning achievement also increasing among students. So we see also uh, students learning in innovative way and as you know that most of the people especially girls are afraid of uh, mathematics and science they don't enroll in those subjects because they think it's very difficult but i think the difficultness comes uh, because of the way you teach the subjects so if you teach the subject in a more friendly way it becomes more easier and more friendly and attract more students. Uh, mathematics and science are really have a good, uh, a big role to play in the development of our country. I'm asking a question about uh, environmental degradation to air pollution. I know you are a leader in teaching, you, sp uh, you support mathematics and other science. I'm going to ask if you plan to look for the, the environmental degradation. It's our social responsibility as well. As we grow, you know, start using more technology, we also keep in mind that we are not putting a lot of dent on the environment. We try to, you know,
dedicated is to highlight learnings across the globe in integrating information and communication technology in education. So, and it's spearheaded by UNESCO. As you know, we, the world is changing because of the pandemic of COVID-19 and um, we've been forced, even if, even though Rwanda is, is really ahead in terms of uh, raising awareness as well as implementing ICT in education, but we've been forced to fast track at ICT in education. So this, this celebration comes at the right time, and we hope this is going to be um, a very interesting uh, celebration. So this year's uh, theme is Beyond Disruptions, Technology Enabled um, Teacher Training. So we'll have um, the agenda of today. We'll start by a keynote address by UNESCO, and then we'll have uh, my colleague Eric Kimenyi uh, give us an overview of the AIMS Teacher Training Program. And then we'll have um, our distinguished uh, panelists give us some of the, uh, the lessons as well as uh, tell us about the work that they've been doing in terms of technology and about teacher training. And then later on, we'll have virtual remarks from um, the AIMS uh, CEO as well as the Chansen International CEO um, to close the session. And after that, we'll have a Q&A with everyone. So we have, um, we, we, are, we are currently um, doing um, a physical event as well as a virtual event. So we have uh, one, uh, almost a hundred teachers following this on YouTube uh, from different districts. Um, and then we have also a few guests online. So as I said, we have um, AIM CEO we also have the Chansen International CEO uh, following online. We also have uh, Kerry Rose, who's w going to be one of our panelists. She's from the University of Alberta. I'll tell you about more about her when we start the panel. But also in the room, we have a um, representative from the Rwanda Education Board, uh, Dr. Christine, as well as Jean-Paul. We have, um, of course, representative of UNESCO. We have the director, um, the district director of education from Kamonyi. We have representative of uh, sector education, uh, representative of SEOs. We have um, ICDL uh, general manager for Africa. Um, and then we also have AIMS champion teachers, and we also have ICDL uh, graduates. So I believe I've covered everyone in the room. Um, other than that, we'll be happy to get to know you uh, as we go along. So with no further ado, I would like to welcome the representative of UNESCO to give us a keynote address. Hello? Yeah, I think it's fine, eh? Thank you. Uh, thank you, MC. Um, good afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to apologize because of uh, the short delay of 20 minutes. I was struggling actually to know the venue of the of this uh, event. I confused the, the venue. I want to apologize for that. Um, first of all, uh, happy UNESCO Mobile Learning Week to all of you. Thank you. Um, Allow me to start with apologies from our secretary. 
Hello, uh, Mr. Ben Mutesa, Secretary General of Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO, who wish to be with us here, who wish to honor the invitation from AMZ. But uh, due to other important meetings, he couldn't make this appointment. And therefore, he delegated me to deliver uh, the speech on his behalf. Me who's going to deliver the speech, I'm called Dominic Mvunawande. I'm the director of Sciences, Technology and Innovations at the Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO. Dear Dr. Christine, Director of ICT in Education at the Rwanda Education Board, DEE Kamonyi and SEE representative from Zanze District, Mrs. Ruth Mukachimenyi, Program Leader at the Master Cabinet Foundation, Leader in the Teaching Program, Dear Mrs. Solange, Omurisa, General Manager of ICDL Africa, County Director, Inspire Education Empower, IEE, AMS TTP Champion Teachers, District Coordinators, Representative, ICDL Graduates, all AMS TTP Teachers, other teachers and district education leaders streaming over on our line, close to 600 uh, teachers that are following this event, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend my thanks to the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, AMS, through its teachers training program, TTP, and the other key partners, namely Rwanda Education Board, ICDR Africa, and the MasterCard Foundation for taking lead as we celebrate the UNESCO Mobile Learning Week 2020. Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO, Senedui, is delighted to be with you during this important event. Our commission, through its various departments, Department of Education, Department of Science, Technology and Innovations, Department of Communication and Information, Department of Culture, Social and Human Sciences, advances Rwanda's priorities and interest as a UNESCO member state and provides advice on the implementation of UNESCO frameworks and strategies in Rwanda, among them the ICT in Education, ATC. Mobile Learning Week, ladies and gentlemen, is the United Nations flagship event on digital technologies in education and it has been organized by UNESCO and its partners for the last eight consecutive years. Devoted to the theme of this year, Beyond Disruption Technology Enabled Learning Futures, the 2020 online education of mobile learning week is being held from 12th up to 14th October 2020. We examine the medium and long-term implications of the unprecedented global education disruptions caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic. It aims to draw reasons from the range of education responses deployed in order to inform the planning of technology enabled, inclusive and resilient learning systems for the future. It also aims to explore emerging issues in order to set out an agenda for further research, policy, and practices. 
the UNESCO Mobile Learning Week celebration convene mobile learning expert, practitioners, researchers, industry partners, and the government representatives to facilitate the sharing of innovative mobile learning initiatives, best practices, and research. It also provides a venue where opportunities, questions, and challenges surrounding mobile learning can be discussed and interrogated. For this reason, ladies and gentlemen, UNESCO also collaborates closely with the organizers of the Mobile Learning Week and the other programs such as Africa Code Week, Youth Mobile, Quality Gender Responsive STEM Education, UNESCO Participatory Program, ETC, to realize the important mission of encouraging more girls to participate in those programs. Gender equality in ICT is a challenge that we still have to fully address or overcome. But this celebration and the seminars organized by Africa Institute of Mathematics for Science through TPP program and its partners can be seen as an important milestone on our ongoing way of encouraging girls to improve their skills in digital technology and use it to address challenges in different sectors such as education, health, agriculture, natural resources, social and human development, etc. Et However, coming together today does not only provide us with the opportunities of fulfilling the important task of encouraging and supporting our youth in ICT, but also to work on the development of the whole sector in our country. The constant efforts of our government and our people to improve our country in the ICT sector have paid off. We have been named Eastern Africa's number one ICT nation and we benefit from important technological innovations every day. To keep these efforts going, however, is crucial since ICT is one of the key sectors which enable sustainable social and economic development. Therefore, it is our pleasure at the Rwanda National Commission for UNESCO to also invite the different partners to take the first step toward the implementation of the UNESCO programs highlighted above. Toward my end, I want to congratulate ICDL teacher graduates for their performance and achievements. Once again, I'm thankful to the AMZ community and its partners for this today's wonderful celebration. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remarks. Um, now I would like to call my colleague Eric Kimei, the program manager of the AIMS Teacher Training Program, to give us an overview of the AIMS Teacher Training Program. Thank you very much, um, Esther. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Eric Kimenyi, and uh, like it was introduced, I'm the program manager for the TTP. So I'd like to welcome everybody. So if I can um, get our presentation up. Thank you. <coughs> so to right here, I'm going to give you an overview of the AIMS TTP program 
basically telling you what we've been doing and progress so far. Uh, this right here, it's quite a um, common site for most of us, but this shows the, the different districts where we have our interventions. And in particular here, we're looking at the green uh, districts across the country. Next slide, please. On this one, uh, it shows the four different pillars of our intervention. The first one is on the training of teachers. And uh, this is in-service and pre-service teachers. The second pillar here, we focus on uh, the provision of learning materials and uh, ICT support. The third pillar is on outreach and public engagement. And the fourth pillar is where we look at evidence generation for policy dialogue. Next, please. So I will just talk through a bit on, on each pillar. So for the first pillar, which is uh, training of teachers, and uh, where we're here we're looking at pre-service and in-service teachers. The main objective is to improve the performance of girls and boys in maths and science at post-secondary level. So for the different activities, we have training of um, you know, over 4,000 in-service teachers, training of pre-service teachers, as well as school subject leaders. Next. So here we just have a visual representation of the different training sessions we had with most of uh, our teachers in here and also at the different uh, districts. For pillar two, here we talk about the learning materials and resources, the provision of learning materials and, res and resources, as well as ICT support, which we provide to the schools. So the main objective is to equip uh, our teachers with relevant resources, which will help them uh, to improve the delivery of CBC, uh, the competence-based curriculum in schools. So outside of um, the provision of um, ICT as uh, support tools, we also provide um, laboratory equipments as well, science laboratory equipments. In here, going with today's theme, this is a picture of our, one of our smart classrooms located in uh, Kamonyi district, um, ES Kol Segonder Rutovge. And that there is one of our teachers using um, the ICT tools that were installed. On our pillar three, we talked about outreach and public engagement. And the main objective is to increase the public support to help our students um, to pursue sciences and mathematics as they go along uh, their career and as well as in education. So the activities include um, award systems, um, organization of Olympiads, as well as awareness uh, creation. In here, this is a visual representation. So we have uh, some students, um, secondary school students during the preparation for the Olympiads. We have the awareness campaigns we did, uh, as well as the AIMS run, which was also part of our awareness campaign. For pillar four, it's mainly evidence generation for policy dialogue. And the main objective is to increase interest among policymakers and the private sector on the importance of mathematics and sciences uh, in education in Rwanda. So we looked at uh, having different partnerships with different private sector players and also policy dialogue with the policymakers. We're looking here at the government institutions um, and the ministry. as well as uh, organizing industry visits for students that will help them learn um, as we go along. So in here we have a, a visual representation of students during the recently organized uh, industry visits, different groups of students in different um, industries. So as part of the implementation of CBC, which 
as MCTP, we um, continue to support. There are some main factors which uh, are being addressed through our support. So here we're looking mainly at teachers' pedagogical approach, resources used by teachers, uh, providing a conducive learning environment, assessment methods to support learning in and out of the classroom, and also supporting the increased use of technology. Now, all of that we've seen uh, was before the COVID um, pandemic. Now, we're going to talk more on us outside of the interruptions that we had, the TTP program still continued to carry out some certain activities. So, we started by engaging teachers uh, through the various online platforms and communication platforms. Here, among the most uh, popular ones, we're looking at Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, and uh, obviously uh, WhatsApp, which is uh, very popular. So, this helped to establish uh, communication, collaboration, uh, creative thinking, and uh, also improve the creativity within the teachers and as well as peer learning uh, across the, the different sectors and districts. A community of practice was built um, and through the peer learning, the, diff the various uh, skills were increased for the teachers as we went along the different sessions. In terms of numbers, we have uh, over 450 teachers who have been trained and certified through the ICDL program. We have more than a thousand teachers who were trained on various uh, pedagogic responsive uh, pedagogical modules. We have over 800 teachers who were mobilized to use the, the different social media platforms. And this has helped to, um, w where we've seen a large number of teachers now partaking in various uh, public dialogues online. We've had more than 400 maths and science teachers who participated in the audio lesson challenge. And we also have had over 500 teachers who were mobilized to register and partake in the English proficiency training. And we have had more than 500 teachers who have reviewed online resources. And they've also taken the pre-tests and post-tests to enhance the mastery of uh, certain topics which the teachers um, pinpointed as difficult. And looking at focusing on the training of teachers on effective um, ICT pedagogies, which uh, is also our focus for today, we, during the different uh, trainings that went across the, the districts, here we can see a spread of the, the number of teachers who participated. And like I mentioned earlier, we had over 400 of them. And each teacher had to do an average of eight modules. And the pass rate, we had over 50% of the teachers who participated having passed all eight modules. So this shows that uh, from here we can see there's a variance in the performance of the teachers, but it also helped us to realize um, certain areas where we will improve as the program, as the training goes on. The next slide shows you um, the different subjects that the teachers who um, did the trainings that they teach. Um, the next slide is on the gender for the, the male and the female. For the next slide also shows us the different districts in terms of their participation. So these slides are mainly graphics to, to show a visual uh, representation. Now, on the next slide, it shows us um, qualitative feedback that we continue to collect, to gather during the various trainings. So in this uh, picture on the black screen, there's a, there's a word cloud. And the words that are 
bigger than the rest are the most common uh, words that were used by the teachers or feedback that was provided to the teachers, by the teachers, sorry. As we can see here, we will notice uh, words like, uh, well, if we start with the question, so the question says, uh, provide three important things you've picked from this training and how you will use them in your normal teaching activity. So the response, we can see there's teaching. Uh, teaching, basically the teacher is showing that these ICT skills they've acquired will help them in their teaching uh, in the normal, when they get back to, uh, to, the, back to normal. And it also helps to improve, this training has helped to improve their ICT skills. And uh, it also will help them when they are delivering the lectures, their lessons, and preparing their lessons. So we can notice that those are the big uh, main words. Amongst other key words that were used, those were the, the most popular ones. Uh, on the next question, we, put, uh, uh, we raise this to the teachers saying, following this training, which areas can be improved? So basically trying to get uh, feedback from the teachers who participated on how we as uh, the people organizing this can improve the training. So here we see keywords like face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, it was more of a request that it would be helpful if um, these trainings are also conducted at some point, post-COVID, face-to-face uh, -face trainings. It also, we can see keywords like trainee. So these trainers, these trainings that were conducted were being supported by trainers, master trainers, onto the, the trainees. So the, the, here they were mentioning how support to the trainees, more support to the trainees would also be helpful for them. And we've seen a word like uh, motivation. So this is also something that was raised by the teachers that uh, more motivation during these trainings would also be helpful. On the next slide, we ask the question, what in particular do you like about using the live meetings as part of the training. So outside of the trainings that we were, go were conducting, we also had live sessions through the communication platforms that we'd mentioned, WhatsApp, on Facebook, and, uh, and on Zoom, as well as Microsoft Teams. So here we can see that the teachers raised that the, through the live sessions that we have post the tr after the trainings or in between the trainings, they get a chance to be able to ask questions, to raise questions. Hence, uh, question coming in bold. We can also see feedback as a bold thing because the teachers um, appreciated the fact that they can be able to give feedback to the organizers. organizers. And they also appreciated that we can be able to conduct live meetings so that we can uh, get feedback from the teachers. On the next slide, we asked about uh, what in particular they like in using the different platforms, WhatsApp, Teams, and, and Zoom. So we can see the big words here, um, collaboration. So these, using these online tools has helped to improve collaboration. And um, we can see ideas. So ideas are shared through collaboration and on the different platforms. Microsoft team has uh, come up there um, among the most easy to use uh, platforms. I think it's also mainly from the support um, through Reb on this. On the next slide, we asked about the difficulties they faced in self-directed learning. And among the main things which is uh, very common is uh, network. So here we can see internet connection, um, network, time management, um, network issues, but mainly uh, technical issues. On the next slide, we asked the question on what are some of the things that helped you succeed in your modules. So among the things we can see uh, collaboration coming back, we also notice hard work. So this is the resilience aspect from the teachers through um, determination and um, as well as them being able to, to do diagnostic, diagnostic 
tests prior to, to doing the exams, it was also helpful for them. On here, on the last um, slide, we have a quote from one of our teachers who um, was able to participate in the English language proficiency training um, that was being coordinated through TTP. And at the moment, most of us, we are aware that uh, the Ministry of Education through REB is also now carrying out tests for English language. So here we have one of our teachers who had already taken part in the, the TTP supported trainings online. Uh, I will read it out. It says, the online English proficiency course uh, trained me. We have many foreign teachers who only use English to communicate when they're in Rwanda. Guess what? They got 30s for A1. A1 is a grade. And I got 59, which is three steps ahead of B2. And I'm sure that I would have got 70s if there was enough time. So it shows you that uh, the previous activities and the previous support that we are providing to the teachers directly has an impact on the tests that are now actually being conducted uh, through REB. And we'll expect more of this with our uh, other teachers. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Marcos. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, this is really wonderful, especially if we consider that we were um, on lockdown, no one was going anywhere. This is um, impressive and um, encouraging numbers to see how everyone rallied around um, training themselves, improving their, their proficiency either in English, in ICT, and any other skills. So with no further ado, I would like to go on our panel, to, to proceed with our panel. Um, so our panel today is, is around the theme beyond disruption, technology, and able teacher training, and mostly um, around lessons lessons learned um, from the AIMS teacher training program. So um, our panelists, so we have uh, Sylvie Ingabire. She's, the, uh, she's a chemistry teacher from Fawe Girls School. She's also an AIMS uh, TTP champion teacher and district coordinator in Karenji district. Um, we also have uh, Samuel Muhaimana who's a mathematics teacher in ES Rutoge, Kamonyi district, and he's uh, an AIMS TTP champion teacher and district coordinator, Kamonyi district. Um, we also have the director of AIMS teacher training program, um, program uh, Dr. Herin Otieno. And last but not least, joining us on, online, we have Kerry Rose. She's an in-service and pre-service teacher trainer at the Center for Mathematics, Science, and Technology Education at the University of Alberta, Canada. And she's actually um, finishing up her PhD in, in how to, to develop this uh, professional development for teachers. So uh, with no further ado, I would like to start with the first question. And I I'll I'll want all the panelists to contribute to this. Um, so this is a mobile learning week uh, theme that I just talked about. Um, we all know, we, we've all been in COVID for the past six months and uh, we've had to change how we live. So I would like to understand what, how has your experience um, of training during this pandemic um, been? So I would like to start with our teachers. And let me start with Sylvie. Good afternoon. Thank you, Esther, for giving me this time. Uh, the experience I have during the corona outbreak, at the beginning, I thought that it was not possible to conduct those training online. But today, I'm sure that training can be conducted online as well as 
face to face. I had a lot of expectations, but I was afraid that most of those expectations were not to meet. But today, I can witness and confirm that this is another best way of reaching to many trainees at the same time. It wasn't easy at the beginning because many of the teachers were not having some skills like uh, ICT competencies, it wasn't easy to follow the training at the beginning, but luckily enough, uh, Ames started the training by giving us some relevant skills or knowledge. Because at the beginning, they started by training us on how to use WhatsApp, how to use Facebook, Twitter, Zoom, and, and uh, Microsoft Team. Those are most of the web-based communication tools we used throughout those trainings. From that, I can say that we learned a lot from those basics related to ICT tools. Uh, today, I can say that during this time, I was too productive because I didn't have any day off. My time was always been used properly. It was very productive. I learned a lot of things. Some of those things that I can mention today, uh, I learned how to plan my daily activities. We had a lot to do. I'm telling you this as a teacher as a champion teacher, but also as a district coordinator. I had uh, six centers to coordinate. It wasn't easy, but I managed to do that through those trainings I acquired before, I attended to before. I, now I'm able to use Zoom to share files remotely. I have many skills that I'm using right now to coordinate all those training centers at the same time. Another important thing I can mention today, I'm, I'm a disciplined person today. Why? Because before I used my time to watch those cartoons. I don't like movies for adult person. I prefer cartoons. But I didn't even spend 30 minutes to watch those cartoons movie. I was always busy doing stuff, uh, searching for documentations, uh, chatting with my colleagues, helping them. Or sometimes I was using my time to, to solve some problems. You know, when, when you have uh, different people who are meeting, who are conversing, and they have different backgrounds, and culture, sometimes those problems are found on the ground. So sometimes I used my time to, to solve those problems. And I can conclude saying that training or studying does not necessarily to take place when there is physical spaces, physical places like this. Because we managed to do that when every person was sitting at their homes or different places. And also, I am telling you this as a mother and also as a wife. You know, in the Rwandan culture, always women have a different things to do at home. From morning up to evening, but I learned how to manage all those activities and there was no gap either in mother's activities or spouse activities or as a coordinator. So I can today stand and say that the training was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvie. I'd like to ask someone. What was your experience during this pandem pandemic? 
thank you very much. Uh, my name is Samuel Muhaimana. I'm a teacher of mathematics uh, in the Kamunya district. Uh, in the AC Rutogwe. Yes, Rutogwe, uh, Korisogonde Rutogwe. Uh, my experience in this COVID-19 outbreak uh, regarding the two training of teachers online. Uh, I have received I have received uh, different scores about how to conduct training online. Uh, starting, uh, I was thinking that it is not, it is not possible uh, because uh, many teachers, they don't know how to use even uh, Facebook. Uh, we have uh, discussed with uh, our dog Tawherin uh, about how uh, we can start uh, an easy things before we take any complex things. We started by using uh, Facebook. Week one in April, we start uh, by training teachers about how to use Facebook, uh, Twitter. They are saying that the Twitter is for readers, for government readers. But we, are saying, we have said to, uh, we have taught the teachers, even themselves, they are, they are readers. So, uh, They have, they have new the skills about using those those uh, social medias. Then, uh, uh, like also WhatsApp and uh, Twitter. Uh, okay. So and and also uh, after uh, studying about those uh, social medias, we have took uh, another uh, video conferences applications like uh, Microsoft Team. SQL Webex meeting and uh, Google Meet. Uh, you can't imagine how you can be afar and then you conduct a meeting by using these applications. Some of us, we didn't know how uh, these applications uh, work, uh, but during this COVID-19, we have explored more on how to use these applications. On my side, as a teacher, I have I have gained the training before, before COVID-19 about uh, uh, ICDL. It was uh, skills about to be familiar of uh, computer essentials. And then in COVID-19, I took uh, training on MCE, Microsoft Satisfied Educator. It was conducted by Rebo with the cooperation of, uh, of CADI. But uh, I, was, I spent uh, uh, three, three months in my room being uh, face-to-face uh, face but online, remotely, uh, conducting this training. You can't imagine how uh, 70,000 uh, teachers has gained uh, these skills remotely. Uh, so I can say that uh, 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 online, online training or mobile training, uh, it's a possible. Uh, teachers has, uh, have already uh, been fearless, so they have increased the confidence. So uh, even there are some teachers who fear using uh, technology, but they have seen that it is very easy. Even though this pandemic is going to be diminished, but even though if it come again, we can study <laughs> remotely at our home. Because teachers, now we can say that they are fearless using technology. Uh, thank you. Let me close here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samuel. So I would like to go to, uh, to Herin, Dr. Herin. What, what was your experience in adapting uh, the teacher training program to during this COVID? Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Sylvie, and thank you, Sam. I think um, my experience, the glimpses of my experience have already been presented by, by um, Sylvie's submissions and Sam's submissions. But as I would say as, as, as a program, of course, um, as the theme of this year's UNESCO Mobile Week uh, uh, is, there was a sense of disruption. We obviously were caught, like everybody, 
uh, we realized we couldn't continue with business as usual. And while in our original plan, there was always a plan to do some form of online training. So the TTP program was eventually supposed to evolve into becoming blended so that we have online and physical. But we hadn't thought, we hadn't put in place uh, the infrastructure. But I want to appreciate my team, the team that works with me and the leadership uh, that we have. And of course, the partners that we work with, uh, which include MasterCard Foundation, of course, Rwanda Education Board. We were able to sit and think, I mean, and plan. And as, as has been said, it's been, it's been a very intense three months. Um, Sam has just said that he sat in his room for three months uh, engaging with fellow teachers, just as Sylvie has said. So I would say, uh, if I was to summarize, it's been a very intense period of learning. Um, we had to imagine and how training would look like because as educationists, we understand that it's not the technology that is going to do the training. First and foremost, we have to consider what it takes to learn. And especially in this case, we had to consider the fact that the teachers were going to not just always have somebody facilitating the training, but part of what we had to build in the teachers was the aspect of self-directed learning. And so taking into consideration all that, we're able to put together, and it's something that was built progressively. So we, we adopted the approach of act and learn. So we would implement, observe, get feedback from the teachers, and keep tweaking and improving. So I would underscore that, um, of course, the, the, we have the numbers here on our on our uh, brochure talking about we've reached over 1,000 teachers and different number of teachers within those have participated in different programs. But I would say that the engine of what we have done so far has been the teachers themselves. We had to rely on the district, cham our champion teachers who we very quickly transformed into district coordinators and charged with the responsibility of working, of course, in consultation with our district education leaders, the DDEs, the SEOs, who are really, really helpful to help mobilize the teachers from their own um, activities. Because, of course, they were not sitting idle. We, people, teachers were doing other things because they had the time. So the champion teachers, who are all here, I mean, most, the majority of those who are in this room are our champion teachers. They were the engine of what we did. And, of course, we also have the sector coordinator, uh, the sector coordinator. So please just clap for yourself. Sorry, allow me to do this. Champion teachers, let's clap for ourselves and our sector coordinators. And um, so we worked with them. We mobilized them through the, the leaders, the DDs, the SEOs were really helpful. Technology, I mean, we had to create 52 WhatsApp groups based on the training centers that had been created by our lead, uh, the sector education officers. So there's a lot of mobilization. If you ask me, there was a lot of mobilization, and we used the structure that was in place through the teachers to mobilize. But then there was also a lot of training. As they have said, we, we spent the first one month not focusing on what we want to train, but focusing on building the skills, the values, and the attitudes. Because many of us, only visualize training as physical, learning as physical. So we do not just want to plunge into saying we are going to train before we worked on the software. So we spent a whole uh, one month thinking about what does it mean for you or what demands is it going to take of you to actually sit down and in your own um, house and engage with learning. And so there's a lot of mobilization, building that sense of cohesion. So the teachers were in from the same district, but they didn't know each other. So we spent the first month just having sessions on WhatsApp where teachers had to introduce themselves to one another, talk about what they're teaching, build that sense of connection, and also build that sense of collective um, identity as AIMS TTP teachers. We had to engineer them to think differently, enhance the aspect of um, what, um, res resilience, so we have a signature song, and our signature song, which we sing every time we have a meeting, every time we have a training, is um, Mawe Karambe, Mawe Karambe, Ma Mawe. Thank you. So basically through that, Esther, what we did was to just visualize that mother who is carrying a child on her back, and uh, draw the, the, the identity that's about resilience, it's about sacrifice. And um, it's been exciting. We have done so much, as I've been saying, and I believe we'll be discussing uh, what are some of those specific things that we've done. 
but we are here to say that technology is very important. It can facilitate training. We were able to reach many more teachers than would have reached within that short period of time, but we also know that the human interaction is important. So we are looking forward for the opportunity to blend the two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Irene. Um, now I'd like to, to ask uh, Kerry Rose, who's online. I, I hope she can still hear us and we can hear her. So uh, I'll also, as a trainer of pre-service as well as uh, in-service teachers, what was your experience uh, during this pandemic in terms of teacher training?
Uh, that involve uh, hands-on and experiential activities. So I would like to also hear from you uh, what you believe is going to be to be fundamental changes that we may anticipate from uh, COVID after COVID or even during COVID. Um, and what are the different opportunities or challenges that we may see technology bring um, in teacher training? Um, in teacher training.
they have one hour if it's online than uh, traveling for two, three days to, to accommodate uh, different requirements. So I'd like to come back to, uh, to Herin also and ask you again, what are the different um, changes that you're, you're anticipating long term, but also um, structural support that you would like to see us build uh, to make sure that teacher training programs are more robust going forward. Thank you, um, Esther. The opportunities that we have seen during this COVID pandemic, just like she has said, the opportunity for the teachers, one, to interact across the provinces. So if you think about, um, and across the country, if you think about uh, before COVID, um, the continuous professional development programs that needed to happen sometimes within a school or within a sector. There was quite a bit of challenge because when you want to have a training within a school, you'd find that maybe you have only one maths teacher in that school. So there isn't really a peer to be able to engage with. And so then there was a consideration of let's then bring together the teachers from the sector. But then at that point, you have to deal with issues to do with distance, and all the logistics that is required of that. And, and, and then, of, of course, we also know that we have teachers in, in Rwanda, for example, at uh, School of Excellence A1, I mean, not A1, um, Y9 and Y12. So one of the things we have seen during this period is that sense of cohesion, that due to using the platforms that we were using, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it is uh, Teams, we were able to have teachers from across different schools and teachers from across different regions have an opportunity to interact and share information. And it's not just um, locally. We also had our teachers take advantage of some online trainings that are happening. We talked about English proficiency. The English proficiency training they've been doing, they have actually been online free courses. So they have been able to plug in and they've been able to follow those courses consistently. And of course, some of them are actually from some very high level institutions. And so the, that is one of the opportunities that we are seeing. And structurally, um, as we go forward, we don't want to lose this. We want to be able to, one, build more um, collaborations and relationships within the country, but also within the region and outside the country. The other thing, just to contextualize, right now we are talking about COVID, and COVID has panned out, and we are all experiencing it differently. If you think about a school in Canada, some of the structural uh, challenges will be different from the structural challenges that we're seeing in Africa. And one of the things we have done in this period, because of technology, we have been able to um, organize for forums where teachers from some of the African countries, so we're talking here, Ghana, Cameroon, and South Africa, who reopened their schools in June. We've had two sessions with them where we've been able to sit and listen and discuss what their experiences were as they went back to school. What did it mean to teach maths um, with a mask on? How do you still ensure there is interaction, connection? So I, I think in terms of the future, one of the things we have to do is we have to ensure that these walls that have been broken, either within school, between districts, nationally and internationally, need not to be built again. So, and, and I know uh, with us continuing to use our technology, it will be possible to do that. I think in terms of support, as we have seen when Eric made his presentation, when um, the teachers were asked, what were some of the challenges? Of course, one of the biggest challenge is uh, infrastructural challenge. So if you look at um, this particular um, notebook that we have, and on the last page, you will see a teacher, and that teacher is actually on a tree um, with a computer. So that teacher was not having adventure. That teacher is in this room today. Um, that teacher was not having adventure. And if you look at page, the first, the page five also, you'll see actually the same teacher sitting uh, down amongst the bush. Uh, I mean, down with, in a bush. So these actually were pictures that were presented, uh, were sent to us by one of our teachers who was trying to show us the different um, positioning he has to do depending on the platforms we are using. So when we're using WhatsApp, because the internet uh, demand is not too much, he sits comfortably in his house. When we're using something like Microsoft Teams, he has to move outside his house and sit in the bush as we're seeing on page five. But sometimes he requires more internet, so he has to go up the tree 
to be able to tap into the network to be able to engage. And of course, we, en we really applaud that sense. So structurally, there is room for us to work with all the other stakeholders to ensure that, and I know as our UNESCO uh, representative talked, as a country, we have made quite great headway. And as we continue to improve the infrastructure, whether it's internet connection or um, tools like them having laptops or not laptops, you realize that we talked about 1,000 teachers, yet we target 3,000 teachers. Where were the 2,000 teachers? The 2,000 teachers were not rich, not necessarily because they did not want to be rich, but they were not rich because they did not have smartphones. So the only teachers who were able to participate were the teachers who had smartphones. So you can, look at, you can start seeing some of the structural things we have to do, but I guess more fundamentally, so long as we can build this um, technology enabled training and of course with physical training within the system and create policies that will support it. We have already started seeing the harvest and we believe we'll be able to harvest more. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Irene. I think um, uh, this is a very um, clear understanding of what it means to be connected and it's, it's a critical need and at this point there's several discussions saying people have to be connected, it's a right as having water and electricity in your home. And I think it's true going forward. So I would like to come back to Sylvie. Um, you're a chemistry teacher and some of the things that you require mostly um, exper experiments for students to, to take place during class. Um, Kerry touched upon how they're doing uh, ex experiential activities, but I would like to hear from you what you think school or learning will look like when you go back to school, especially having gone through uh, this technology and able training. What do you think learning will look like um, in your own classroom? I'm sure that in this pandemic, the, the education or the way we, we deliver content will totally have to be totally changed. Not totally, but partially. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? Because there is something that has to be changed. Primary change will relate to physical protection against the coronavirus spread. Those are, I can mention like social distancing, we had the habit of using groups activities. Like in the laboratory, we don't have enough equipment so that each student should carry activity or experiments alone. Normally, students have to share learning materials or laboratory equipments. I'm sure that during this pandemic, those habits should stop. Students either, we, we are planning, that's what I'm, I'm having in my mind. For example, students will not stop to do practicals, but we will look away for handling those issues. For example, if we have scarce materials, but students have to do practicals, I think that we should look away of washing their hands every time before touching on any item. And also, group discussions will not be easier than it was before. I'm thinking on a way of using platforms like, like Zooms again, using Zoom, so that students might discuss but not sitting on the same table as we used to do before. And another thing that I think that has to be changed, we should choose strategies that will accelerate teaching and learning. Because students have been sitting for long, and we have a lot of things to teach them, and they also have a lot of things to learn. So some of the strategies has to be changed. I think that we can adopt some strategies. One example that I can mention, we should look for strategies that will engage students and um, that can increase focus and encourage cognitive development of learners. Another thing I can mention, 
We should think on a way of mixing online teaching and also face-to-face -face teaching. Because if you want to accelerate our teaching and learning process, face-to-face -face only will not help. Because we also know that the number of students and teachers has to be reduced. We normally have uh, a class having a capacity of hosting like 46 or 45 students. But in this pandemic period, we are no longer allowed to accommodate all those students to sit in the same room. So there is a strategy of minimizing from those numbers from 46 up to 23. That means that even numbers of, of desks have to be increased because normally students, I'm um, giving an example from my school, two students share one, one desk. And if we want to put social distancing at least of one meter between two students, it's clear, understandable that two students cannot share the same desk. So it means that we have to increase the number of desks in a, a classroom. And I think that also shifts should be used. Because if we had a student, you know, a classroom of 46, and now they should be studying, uh, they should be sitting in a class of 23, and all of those students has to follow student, you know what, uh, classes, I think that we have to plan on how those students will all study, but in different uh, occasions. I was suggesting that perhaps we should look a way of using shifts, those we study in the morning and the others we study in the evening. So I can conclude by saying that it's a must to change some of the behaviors. Thank, thank you very much, Sylvie. I think you've touched on very critical points. Um, and I think we have uh, most teachers, most um, leaders in education have, I think students are going back to school on 2nd of November. So there's some of these strategies that have to start being implemented today and now before students come back. So um, I would like to go to, to Samuel. Sylvie just talked about what needs to change in the learning and teaching process. But for you, um, what do you think um, is needed or some of the recommendation that you would like to give in terms of um, training teachers, whether they're pre-service or in-service? What are some of the changes that you would like to see, especially on the training, uh, on the training part? Okay, thank you, much. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, you, have, you have said about the recommendation I can, I can give to trainers or policy makers. Uh, you see, uh, this uh, pandemic uh, has changed everything. So uh, what I want to recommend firstly is uh, uh, after opening these classes, uh, it, is, it will be a, a must or a necessity so that uh, uh, a teacher will use ICT uh, so that uh, learning and teaching will be possible well. Uh, as a recommendation, I can say that uh, it will be possible if some infrastructures can be increased in terms of uh, like uh, internet connectivity, like a phone, even uh, computers. Uh, because internet will be a tool to be used that this, this time. Uh, another recommendation I can give like uh, policy makers, if we say policy makers, I can go in a lab some, somehow. Uh, you know, uh, there is some places where there is no uh, a connection, there's no connection, uh, you can talk with the MTN or Airtel so that you can solve that issue, so that if someone has a, a phone and uh, internet, uh, even uh, it's, it uh, has bought uh, bond, uh, bundles or uh, 
connection on the phone, but can be a limit, a limitation of the MTN or Airtel. Uh, another thing I can add as recommendation, uh, I don't know if we have MTN and Airtel are not enough. If possible, can you talk with another internet providers outside the countries? There is another uh, institutions which can come in Rwanda so that I can increase the problem of this connection. It's another recommendation. For AMZ, as a, a trainer or policy makers, uh, what I want to recommend them, uh, training will be also another thing. I want that even though we are, we are going uh, to reopen the classes, I want that uh, AMOS can be in touch with teachers so that uh, if there is a problem or a misconception of some terms, uh, AMOS can organize another training so that teachers can handle such, uh, such problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel. Um, I would like to ask my last question to, to Kerry and Herin. And, uh, and I would like to understand the motivation um, for teachers during, um, in terms of uh, going through online training or technology-enabled training, um, what would motivate or what did you see as best practices to motivate teachers to actually go through uh, this training? So I'll start with Kerry and then close with um, Herin. We, we cannot hear Carrie, so, and she has started answering.
Thank you. Um, I think the topic of motivation is a big one. Uh, our teachers know that. But I will just say that uh, agreeing with Kerry, one of the key motivations was uh, opportunity for teachers to learn from one another. And many times when we saw a success story or a demonstration of uh, something that a teacher had done, would very quickly share it on our WhatsApp platforms and help them see that, you know, I'm facing trouble, but also a fellow teacher is facing trouble. And these are some of the efforts he or she has put to overcome that. So if that teacher can do it, I can also do it. So that opportunity of sharing experience is very key. The other one was just modeling the kind of lifestyle that we are trying to demand of them. So I believe uh, part of the feedback was the fact that they could see that that sense of engagement we were requiring of them to, to follow different trainings and everything. We had opportunity where we had live conversations and they could actually see that we are modeling that. It is something we are walking the talk. It's part of our lifestyle. They can see that sense of resilience also in us. And just sharing with them the struggles we are also going through and what mechanisms we are trying to put in place to overcome that. So that was also very important. But one of the things that we also appreciate is that just being able to celebrate them for the things that they have done and differentiate those, you know, if people, somebody is making effort, then being able to differentiate that they are going to get their certificate, they're going to be recognized for doing something, perhaps they're getting more responsibility within the system. Those are some of the things that um, we have identified. And of course, uh, the relational aspect also is very important. That they see that you're not some head teacher with a cane just trying to push them to do things, but the teachers have this sense that we are a family. We can talk to one another. They can reach out not just to their leaders, teacher leaders, but they can reach out to us as Ames TTP. They can send WhatsApp messages at any time and we'll respond to it to the extent that it connects to the teacher training or something that we think affects the teacher training. And finally, as we'll be talking about it, we just realize that yes, it will be important to have time when we celebrate them and we have awards that actually recognize the work that they're doing. So uh, as you're aware, um, uh, right now uh, we are working on being able to um, organize an Ames Teacher Award Ceremony that will be coming up in December and uh, we will be recognizing at least two teachers from every training center for the work based on the work that they will have done in the different lines of training. So those are just some of the things that we could talk about mot uh, motivation, but motivation is a big thing for the teachers and especially when you're using technology. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Heron, and to all the panelists. So it, it's all the time I have a question. I don't want to stay um, asking questions, and everyone else has questions. But before we go to the uh, Q&A session, I would like to get s uh, two people to make remarks, um, especially on the Ames Teacher Awards, because this is a very big part of when we talk about motivations for teachers that we are looking forward to. So both of them will be joining us for online. And I would like to ask the CEO of Chance International to, uh, to make a few remarks. Can hear you.
I don't think she's, she's yet done with her remarks. Remarks.
and thank you for launching the Ames Teacher uh, the Ames Teacher Awards. I hope everyone in the room is going to be interested in um, in taking part, in participating, in cheering on our teachers, um, as well as collaborating with us in any way. Um, and I believe if anyone wants to be involved, they can um, reach out to my colleague Eric Kimei, who was here uh, before. So just to go back to our program, I would like to take about um, 10 minutes to if there's anyone who has, um, we've had several uh, good remarks and interventions from our panelists. If there's anyone who has a question or even an opinion to make um, in regards to the conversation that we've had um, on how technology um, can enable uh, teacher training. So the floor is yours, so we have uh, people in the room. Feel free to ask uh, or make an opinion, and we also have people online following on, on YouTube. So we have um, someone there. Thank you. My name is Innocent Hachizimana. I'm, uh, I've been uh, coordinating the ICDR training in Nyanza district. I would like to appreciate all this training we are getting from MZTTP, as well as uh, the trainings we got from ICDR. But I would like to ask the question about uh, advocacy. This question is going to our partners, even the government institutions like REB, we are getting enough skills, I can say, but it would be better if, as, as teachers, we get devices to use the skills we are getting. It would be better if every teacher is with his or her own device to be used in our daily work. Thank you. This was my question. Thank you very much. Um, um, as a trainer, first of all, thank you for the great work you've done over this period. Uh, it wasn't, I know that it took quite some effort to be able to coordinate and uh, support the, the trainees and the mentors. Um, I guess that's a comment and it's something that uh, is agreeable and I believe as uh, our colleague from UNESCO said and perhaps as Dr. Christine maybe we'll be able to comment because I know there are plans and there are considerations. This is a, a burden and something that we know when we've gone for some of those conversations. There's a consideration about, there's, I think the last time I heard we were talking about we, we there was a program So perhaps, Dr. Christine, you want to jump in and maybe just add value to what are some of the considerations around that, given the infrastructural um, cry from the teachers. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm happy that uh, one of our teachers uh, mentioned about access of device by teachers. Uh, not that this is our priority as Rwanda Education Board. We're working hard so that teachers, every teacher owns his own device. So we've started during this past uh, three months, but this was a um, sort of temporary access of device. I, I think everyone uh, was allowed to borrow a device from the school, but not that this is the priority and very soon you're going to have access to your own devices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Christine. Uh, do we have any other remark, question, opinion? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, 
I am Nizmana Vitali, one of the, M the MSTTP trainees. My uh, request goes to Reb, Unedic, and the other partners. I've been seeing how uh, personalized learning is enhanced via, uh, use, via technology. I've been, uh, I want to request whether they, are, they can cooperate with the, these telecommunication companies so that, you can use, so that any teacher can create their own USSD the way they, they created. Uh, this one we have been using uh, star one, three, four, one, two, four. For, for learning. Hope you, you, you know it. The USSC that, that we have been using uh, to support our students to learn at home and to answer some questions online using these small phones. In remote schools, there are schools which, which do not have uh, computers yet, but they need to use uh, um, personalized learning using technology. So once the USSD is available for any, for any teacher who wants to create it, this will help, will help them use personalized learning and personalized assessment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um. Um, I guess uh, I believe um, one of the things I'll just remark is the beauty of hearing our teachers coming up with the suggestions and the solutions. And, and also the fact that we are sitting here with DREB and all the other partners and we are actively taking notes. So thank you very much for the very innovative uh, suggestions which I believe will be considered amongst the other um, interventions that are being thought through. Yeah. One last question or comment? comment? So women teachers, but yes, please go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm Mucho Bosco, a teacher from Kayonza District, a champion teacher and district coordinator. Now, uh, as I'm standing, uh, I would like to request Ames, Minedik, Leb, and other partners to put more, much more effort in training of ICT use. Because as a teacher, uh, this pandemic disease have brought me with the idea of how the future education will look like. So I have learned, I have learned that teaching does not necessarily based on physical teaching. Because I used these programs, these apps like uh, Team, they were how to teach, how a teacher can teach remotely and the students access learning in a good way. Because uh, not only this period of pandemic, also it will be helpful for the teachers and for the students of, of Rwanda to access the skills and the access the education through online. So we can achieve that when all the teachers have skills, have enough skills, or have trained to use ICT tools so that education and teaching and learning can be, uh, can be very good, much more than it is by now. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much. Um, do you have a... Um, um, thank you, um, our teacher. I guess what the teacher is saying is that, of course, uh, the MSTTP teachers are privileged. All the secondary maths and science teachers in the 14 districts, uh, as part of the AIMS teacher training program, are going to go through the ICDL training. And so all of them uh, will obviously uh, have that training. But I believe what's coming out of the teachers and what we have seen with the teachers is that when they acquire those skills, they go back to their schools and they want to transfer the same skills to the other teachers. And I believe part of what that is telling us is the, the value they are seeing in this and the cry that, and I know this is part of what Reb is doing to ensure that all teachers are trained. I just want to read a question here from uh, one of the participants on YouTube. We have around 400 teachers who are um, participating currently and they are following uh, this uh, from different schools and different districts. And Kamonyo Emmanuel um, is asking, um, 
uh, this, is, this is what he's saying. We thank you for knowledge about ICT. Uh, we have taken in this training. This will help us in our teaching and learning um, and teaching of new concepts. But tell us, when will we get the certificate? So um, certificates are a big thing, and we know why. And uh, today, those who are here who uh, underwent their ICDL training, who are the top two from their districts, will get their certificates. And I just want to say that in the course of this month, we expect to hold similar physical meetings, but at the different districts so that there are smaller numbers. And during those, um, uh, not meetings, rather graduation ceremonies, we will actually be awarding certificates, the ICDL certificates to all the teachers who are trained, the 472 teachers who are trained within this phase. I just want to make one small clarification. I know that when Lidi spoke, uh, spoke and she spoke about the award, there was a little bit of an error and I take uh, responsibility for that, that uh, the people who will be awarded, who will be awarded, and she mentioned it will be the top people in ICDL. I just want to um, underscore that actually we'll be considering all our teachers because not all teachers did ICDL, but remember we said there was pedagogical trainings that were going on through the REP platform, mastery content sessions, we had um, audio challenges, and we had English proficiency. So what we are going to do when we are talking about the AIMS Teacher Awards, basically this is to celebrate the teachers for the effort they have put in their own personal training during this COVID-19 outbreak. And what we have been doing, thanks to technology, is that we can track participation in each one of them, including when we have WhatsApp conversations, because we normally have WhatsApp training, and we are working with our maths graduates to actually do analysis of who participate and the levels of participation. So what's going to happen is that we are going to look at all those trainings that we have been um, running during this period, because all teachers were supposed to participate. We always had a timetable and time for all those. And we are going to gauge the teachers overall participation overall participation their scores in the audio lesson um, the levels of engagement in on whatsapp training the levels of engagement on the pedagogical training on the rep platform their scores in the mastery content test that we have been doing which have been online and also their participation and demonstration of english proficiency so and then of course icdl so we are going to average all that each of them might have different weights and eventually, we are going to arrive at the best female teacher in each training center and the best male teacher in each training center. And those teachers are the ones who will get their awards during the uh, December um, celebration. And then finally, let me just explain how we want, how we are going, we con uh, what the plan is about getting the awards, or rather getting the funds for the awards. Each award, there will be simple awards, each award will be around $200 um, at cost. And what we are doing is, we are looking at this as an opportunity to give the public an opportunity to celebrate the teachers. Because during COVID, everybody said, we now understand how important teachers are. So we want us to walk the talk. So what we are going to do is that we are going to, this, these awards are actually going to be given by individuals. We know, for example, um, Solange has offered an award outside ICDL. ICDL is already offering us 10 awards. But Solange has offered her own award. So we might take Solange's award, the $250 that she's going to contribute. And that award might be, that money might be used to buy the award for a teacher in Gororero. And so that teacher will be told, this is your award as the best teacher in Gororero, and it was contributed by Solange Omulisa from ICDL. So we want the general public to actually be the ones contributing as a way of celebrating our teachers. And already we have, um, we have commitments from so many people. As we said, uh, apart from um, ICDL, where we know we'll be getting around 20 awards, we have individuals who have already lined up and said, we want to contribute because we want to celebrate these teachers and the teachers to come. So just a clarification on the way the awards are going to be. And we're looking forward for more people coming forward and saying, I want to donate an award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Herin, for clarification. So I hope we're all going to be advocates and, and then see how 
uh, our friends, our networks can contribute to this teacher awards. So um, I would like to, st to thank our panelists, um, Sylvie Samuel, um, and as well as Kerry for waking up very, very early to be part of this celebration. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Herin, for, for also being part of this panel. Um, so I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Mark, to help us through the ICDL graduation. Um, Mark? Okay, Mark is, uh, Mark Kalisa, he's perhaps stepping out, but anyway, what is going to happen now is we are going to go into a very quick session of um, ICDL um, graduation. Uh, and before we do that, we have a few people to make some remarks. And so, because of time, we are very quickly going to ask the District Director of Education, Kamonyi District, to come and make one or two remarks on behalf of the other district education leaders, because the work we do, we only do because of the great support we have from the leaders at the district level. So please, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone here present. As mentioned, um, uh, my name is Kadio Jene, uh, Director of, of Education in Kamonyi District. Uh, first of all, I take this opportunity to thank event organizers and the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences officials for inviting me and the TTP implemented in our schools especially the Ecole Secondaire Toge. And this time I can uh, make a summary of what has been presented but I'm not the, the closure of the session. I wanted to come back on the use of social media channels as they have facilitated education services in terms of learning and the teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been taken as necessary and the more necessary in this COVID-19 pandemic period uh, where physical communication was quite impossible due to lockdown measures set by competent organs in order to stop COVID virus, coronavirus spread in the human environment. Meanwhile, even though physical contact has been stopped between persons, the need of communication stayed a must in our environment and the basic need between our beloved children and the school environment, especially teachers. Children education must not be stopped because their basic rights, basic aspirations, and constitute their fundamentals of their development. So, education professionals and the organs used to call out education services and to reinforce the use of ICT to enhance and facilitate the communication in education. It is in these regards, in the name of my colleagues, directors of education, we strongly appreciate the support and the oversight of MZ and its partners. The teachers of sciences subjects in Kamonyi 
had already been trained in using ICT around two years ago of working in our district. Teachers of science learned how knowledge and the skills can be transmitted to learners without physical communication. Notary. During the, the period, the students are still at home just now. Teachers had developed many innovative strategies aiming to help students in their respective families. It, the reason why I address my thanks to Mr. Samuel and the job mate for their effort, how they have helped the students in this period. The connection between the school and the learners still exists via those different uh, channels like WhatsApp group, uh, where created and the recent past remotely, YouTube channels where students can observe or experimentation movement and science exuded by teachers while dispersing results, especially in the sciences where students need observation, touching is a very necessary act in the learning. The website also where learning materials can be found and downloaded such as books, teachers can assess student works and they give feedback through websites. A learning platform and the different form of online education services are being used to let a student continue being familiar with the school environment. Besides this, teachers are helping each other via ICT channels and they acquire a lot without attending class or training centers as usual. Education development partners had realized many activities related to mentoring and coaching teachers and service without gathering them in rooms or halls. Via ICT tools, students and teachers conducted such by their own engagement and the interest. They discover, as you know, a lot beyond what trainers can give while sitting together in a classroom. However, this is not affordable, affordable to every teacher and student as a, one of uh, members of this session has mentioned. Lulu areas are more vulnerable than urban. I think it is the responsibility of uh, the public institution. Here, the REB is represented in the UNESCO to avail in our schools or facilities in order to expand this centric communication approach to all schools in order to avoid disparities in education services delivery. The development we need and the dreams must be achieved by everybody, involvement, countrywide and worldwide. In the first step, the school need ICT room, as I said, were equipped and connected to internet. Teachers were trained and motivated to work with modern technology must be also be interested in this. Secondary students and their families must be aware of their support and engagement in this process. I see the devices and the facilities at home are compulsory. The reason why public engagement is one of M's pillars. In short, I call upon of all stakeholders in education, beloved teachers, continue tackling the challenges and barriers related to ICT use in the class in order to eliminate 
and some student mindset taking this as strange or myth or impossible. The scarcity of uh, devices is not the big, the big challenge. The reason why I call upon also to all my colleague teachers to keep safe the devices in place and they develop skills for maintaining those damaged in the classroom. It will be additional value in our working area. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Didi Kamonyi. I just want to say that Kamonyi is a very special district to us as AIMS teacher training program. I think it's the first district we ever visited physically when we started the implementation in um, 2018. And the leadership uh, has continued to support us. But as he said, he's speaking on behalf of all the other district education officers, the sector education officers, some of whom are actually following online. I just want to also mention that uh, this year, um, the best teacher in Southern Province was an AIMS TTP teacher from Kamonyi District. And that is none other than Sam who is here with us. So let's give him a clap. And to celebrate one more item from Kamonyi, uh, as a result of the ICT training that has been going on, we have a set of three teachers dressed up in white. I'll ask them to stand up. Uh, they have created something they call the AIMS TTP TV. And um, this is their own initiative. Uh, it's basically a YouTube channel, but every week they interview fellow teachers to highlight some of the things that are coming out of the AIMS TTP training. And they have also said they're looking forward to using it to uh, interview, um, I mean, to use it as a platform for, for learning and peer mentoring. You can see, actually, they are all branded. That is, we were just surprised that they have even printed their own T-shirts. It's written AIMS TTP TV. They have bought themselves a camera. And so they are very serious. <laughs> and uh, they are already beginning to get... Um, viewership and comments from teachers. I think this week we had a teacher from Uganda asking questions. And so it's something that I think we celebrate and is a demonstration of technology enabled learning, the future, as was part of the theme today. As we um, call the next address, I just want to perhaps just read one comment from the Ministry of Education, Dr. Marie. Um, she is just written here, she's following, she says, Ames, you're doing a great and commendable job to education system to Rwanda and have pros prosperous future through the TTP. An enlightened teacher is the best agent for a positive change um, in including values, attitudes, appropriate skills that will enable the sustainable development of our continent. The CBC can now be implemented to the letter for the well-being of all of us. So just some words of um, encouragement from Dr. Marie Christie, who uh, was supposed to come on behalf of the Ministry of Education. And so let's thank you very much. So on that note, we want to welcome, of course, um, the director of ICT department of REB, which is the engine behind all the ICT work that we're doing. Uh, as, uh, the, uh, what we have done with ICDL, we had a lot of support from them. Getting the teachers to get their laptops was coordinated through the ICT department and a lot of backup and support. So please just welcome Dr. Dr. Christine as she comes to make her remarks um, on this occasion. Please welcome. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm glad to be part of this event. And I would first of all like to congratulate uh, graduates of ICDL and AIMS that has made this to happen. I would like to request you to clap strongly for AIMS at the same time for the graduates. Uh, my remarks are not going to be long. I think uh, all uh, key notes were, were, were uh, noted by different persons who stand in front of you, including Didi of uh, Kamonyi. 
I just would like to to share with you um, the happiness that myself and our team have today because of the way you've quickly embraced ICT for the past six months that we had in lockdown uh, when school were closed. And we've remarked um, that teachers were actively involved in the training and they were not complaining of anything uh, like basic training to use um, like Microsoft Teams. Previously, we had experience that teacher were like when you when you request to to take it, to to go through a training which could be subject wise or ICT wise, mm -hmm. they were like even the very basic tool to use they wanted to be trained before actually taking the actual training. But I was surprised on how quickly no one has requested, like how can we use the maybe Zooms? We've used uh, Teams very uh, often, but no one has, has, has claimed to, to get the training of Microsoft Teams before actually they can start the training. Uh, and the chapter one of the training means that that was done before even the training started. Uh, I really appreciate how you've embraced this. And it's not only the team from Ames. We had also a big number of teachers from uh, other programs. Uh, so far, we've uh, covered 300, I think, 94 schools. And everyone was included. I mean, every teacher from that school, and they went through the similar training that you had through ICDA. I know some of you even had um, worked on both the trainings. So uh, I saw how much you've been dedicated, how you, you learned how to be, I, I mean, you, you became very honest because we are not seeing you. You couldn't see us like uh, rep staff or trainers, but you managed to succeed and you passed a CDL test. So there is a honest behind and the integrity because you, we, we just, we had that trust which, uh, which uh, led us to the intellectual honesty and we, you know, uh, it develops something which uh, makes teachers or everyone who participated uh, like developing um, uh, a sense of responsibility even though no one is supervising. So I believe that after COVID, let's say actually starting from 2nd November that teachers uh, are going to work with children a school with a total commitment, no need of uh, inspection. We know you are honest, you are, you are going to inspect yourselves actually. We saw how you, you, you can do this during the past uh, six months. So I call upon on all teachers that what we have, you, you have uh, learned from ICDL that you can apply when, when school resumes, you understand that we are not going to open for all students at the same time. Some students will stay home due to learning into shifts. So please uh, apply. I know you have learned a lot. You have a very big package that is going to serve those students who will be studying from home and those who will uh, be studying uh, at school face to face. I want to promise that Rwanda Education Board is going to support in all the means. I understand that two main uh, uh, things were noted here, including device as well as internet. Uh, for device, I think I have explained that this is our top priority these days. We are going to make sure that you acquire devices to be used. For internet, we are connecting schools. You mentioned that internet was uh, not quite enough. And there were different suggestions from uh, 
uh, teachers. Uh, I want to also uh, let you know that the government is uh, committed to, to, to connect all schools, not only using the internet from Rwanda, like from um, local internet service providers, but also using, uh, I think, a well-known recent project called Giga Connect, which is uh, between ITU and UNICEF, and quoting uh, His Excellency President of Rwanda, internet is becoming like, um, like uh, not in his own words, as he said, but it's becoming a, like just a basic utility when we need water, electricity, and so on. So I just want to assure you that this is something that's going to be uh, fixed soon. So I want to thank you for your kind attention and I wish you success and great, great energy when you are back to school on 2nd of November. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Christine, and thank you for um, acknowledging the sense of responsibility and uh, trustworthiness that has been demonstrated by the teachers, but also the sense of leadership. And I just want to say that as AIMS TTP, we also appreciated the, the support in the background that we had uh, with the leaders, especially the sector education officers that we continue to coordinate with. And on that note, I just to once again want to recognize the SEO from Musanze, who is here. Um, she was one of the most active SEOs on the WhatsApp, following the conversations with the fellow uh, teachers, and we're really excited that she's here today representing the other SEOs. So thank you very much, and thank you for representing the others. Let's give her a clap, please. And now we move to the point that uh, many of the people here are waiting for, that is the point of getting certificates. And, and these are the ICDL certificates, which are, of course, international certificates. And this is something that the teachers really appreciate about this training, that uh, it's one of the motivation that they go away with a certificate that is internationally recognized. And to set us off in giving the certificates, I would like to invite uh, the general manager of ICDL Africa to come and make a few remarks as uh, we line up the teachers uh, to receive their certificates. Welcome, Solange. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> uh, I, was, I didn't know that I was supposed to speak, but I'll definitely have a short uh, speech to share with you. Uh, basically, I would, not, I would like to say thank you to the teachers, because sometimes it's hard to know, to understand how much energy or how much efforts these teachers put into all this training because it's really not an easy training sometimes they don't have power power is off internet is off um, the laptop does not have the battery maybe they need to charge the laptop at night and all that so all those efforts are recognized and uh, i really appreciate all the efforts and uh, the work you've done to have uh, managed at least to have the all modules done and you passed the tests because everyone when the pandemic when we are told to stay at home psychologically i think everyone was affected so immediately after that you ask people to do such a training with limited access to internet to computers to all that it was really something that was tough but you've proved to everyone that you're really competent and you've proved that you're the right people to, to be trusted to educate our children. Thank you so much for all the efforts you've done into this. And of course, there are many people who are behind this, AIMS, REB, everyone who was involved. Thank you so much for making sure that at least we've proved to everyone that we can do things that people thought were so difficult to be done. I would like to really thank everyone who was involved. On behalf of ICDL, as always, I would like to appreciate AIMS and uh, 
continue to pledge our continuing support to you in all the activities that we do together. So AIMS just to know that we, are, we will always be there in any project that you'll be doing with us. Thank you very much for listening to me and uh, I hope we can now start. Yes, so please just stand there because you will give out the first few certificates. So Eric. Okay, let's call uh, Samima Najan Dedier. If you hear your name, just please come very quickly. Then Esther Nyilanda Ishimie. Then Jean Bosco Javier Emne. So all these teachers who are coming today passed all their modules and they were the best teachers in their districts. So Jean Bosco, Denise Nyonzima, Anatali Nirahabufite. Andre Misago, yeah. Olive Consolé Mishivishi, Calixt Mutungirehe, Lita Nyiraminani. Then Donata Kaitesi. Donata Kaitesi. Thank you, Solange. Thank so you, Solange. She's, yeah, she's missing. Thank you. So we can invite uh, SEO Musanze so then she may help us to give the next batch. Alice Uineza, be prepared. Then David Nitegeka, be prepared. While the DD of Kamoni may be ready to give the next batch. We thank our SEO for this activity. Didi for Kamoni. We invite Juliet Mukamugenga and Jean Dedier Avarikumwe. And then Jean de Dieu Abarikumwe. And lastly, Imakire Mukanya and we. We thank you, uh, the DD of Kamoni, and then it's opportunity to welcome the HOD of Calculum from LAB, the representative. Oh, 
the HOD from uh, uh, ICT, Dr. Christine. Enoch Nzasangimana, you are invited to take your certificate. Then Sifa Vumilia, you are invited to take your certificate. Protegen Uimana. Gustav Uitonze, then Bavo Uela. Gustav, and then Bavo Uela. Let's now thank our Dr. Christine, uh, the representative of our lab in ICT department, then invited the representative of uh, TDI to come forward for giving the certificate on the following uh, people. Daniel Ishimoy, then Etienne Tumvirimana, Daniel Ishimoy, Etienne Tumvirimana, Grace Uguaneza, Vitar Nezimana, and the voter Nizeiman. As doctor has mentioned before, this guy has passed uh, the eight models, even though he was having the, her wife at the hospital, but she, she tried to perform all the eight models, and, she's from, uh, and he is from Musa uh, Gichum district. So I take also this opportunity to thank uh, the representative of LEB, and I would like to invite Dr. Erin Ochiono so to help us to give the next batch. Anastas Minan and Emmanuel Ndagjimana Biledi, then Beatrice Mulekatete. So we can still clap for them. They have worked the hard for sure. Then Jean Soter Kula Dusenge and Janet Uimana. Janet Uimana. Thank you. Uh, let's thank Dr. Erin and the team, uh, the trainees who have got the certificate. And I take this opportunity to invite the representative of UNESCO to give the next batch their certificate. Method and Gizguenayo be ready to take your certificate. Then Clementine Mkarugiza be ready. Method and Gizguenayo. Clementine Mkwar Guiza and Jean de Diem Nyaneza be ready. Mnyaneza, Jean de Diem. 
Then Jane Pomsen Venimana. Jane Pomsen Venimana. So Jean de Dieu is not available. And uh, Pacific and Daisaba. Daisaba Pacific. And also is not available. Let's thank uh, the representative of UNESCO for this activity and the trainees who have got their certificate. And uh, I'd like to invite Plof, Plof, the president of MZ Rwanda, so to come forward and give the certificate on the following people. Francoise Mugeni. Francoise Mugeni, be ready to come to pick your certificate. Then Beatrice Shizurungu. Francoise, come forward. Beatrice Shizirungu. Cassie Gahil. Sylvie Ingabire Mizerwa. Our panelist. And lastly, not the rest, Therese Kamile, come forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, so we are just in the, uh, I mean, we're about to close the last item. Would like um, Grace Wadeza, who was one of the graduates, to just come forth and uh, say a few words on behalf of all the graduates, not just the ones who are here, but the others who are tuned in and will be getting their certificates later in the month. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Grace Ugwaneza. I'm a biology teacher in GS Byumba Inyange in Gitumbi district. Also, I'm a TTP champion teacher. I was a trainee in the ICDR training. I was selected based on some criteria, like to have your, our own laptop but some teacher must have borrowed those laptop on their respective schools aid by Rebu ICT department. It was not easy to meet different teachers of our district on platform in the Jitumbi was 79, but helped by our lovely trainers and mentors was helpful to achieve and to succeed in those training. Trainers registers in skills box during exam help us to give key for the final exam. Mentors used to organize ment meeting for explanation on each module before doing exam. We have we were having two kinds of exam, diagnostic test, which helped us for in revision and then final exam. Pass rate was 75%. To get this mark require Z to work hard for making it. But the spirit of Maui Karambe, thank you, Dr. Erin, <laughs> help us also to get it. Myself as a mother, of three, of three children. The last born has less than two years. It was not easy, you can understand. That is usually, I usually have 
domestic work and also to participate in other training planned by AMC TTP. But since I, I, since I know that I need and its importance in my daily activity of teaching, I have found that time and surrender myself in this training to achieve the best. There was some challenge, like being on the first online training, the stability of internet, sometimes this can affect exam while we have 45 minutes for 46 questions. Finally, I, I passed the all eight module, online essential, online collaboration, computer essential, ICT security, MC, Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, and the ICT in education. Even though all those models are helpful for teaching, math, and science, but ICT and education has its special because it will help me to increase my knowledge and research capacity. I encourage my fellow teacher to use this opportunity at maximum level back to my school, both student, teacher, and staff. I'm sure they will be benefit on this knowledge I got. Rusty, I would thank AMZ for giving this needed knowledge in our careers. We appreciate your support and the collaborations. We thank also ICDR, LAB, train, trainers and mentors for your help. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, for, for all the great work and for representing everybody and for being a true picture of our Maui Karambe spirit. So um, with that, we are actually coming to the end of our session and uh, celebration today. And we want to do so by having some closing speech from our, the Rwanda president for the AIMS Center, Professor Sam, who is here with us. Please, let's welcome Professor Sam as he makes the closing remarks. Thank you uh, very much. Um, so when uh, Erin invited me, uh, she said uh, I'm the president of Ames Rwanda, but just to, so that you are not uh, confused because a few minutes later, uh, before, sorry, you saw um, Lidi Akizimana, who is uh, the CEO of uh, Ames Global Network. So Ames is um, a network uh, of uh, center of excellence. Um, being, uh, so uh, also very important uh, outreaches program, like the one which is uh, managed by uh, Erin, the teacher training program. And we are present in five countries, uh, South Africa, Senegal, Cameroon, Ghana, and Rwanda. So in each country where we are present, um, we are organizing, um, our focus is uh, on mathematical science uh, training, including uh, research and other activities uh, like uh, uh, the very important one where we are all, uh, 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 for which we are all here to, uh, today. And uh, the whole uh, network is uh, managed by uh, Lidi uh, Akizimana, uh, who is uh, the CEO. So that was just to, uh, to give uh, some uh, explanation on uh, the network of EMS. So I'm very pleased to be here, distinguished guests, uh, dear teachers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. So it's a great pleasure to take uh, the floor in this closing uh, ceremony of uh, the EMS TTP learning seminar in the framework of uh, the U UNESCO Mobile Learning Week 2020 under the theme of uh, Beyond Disruptions, Technology Enabled Teacher Training. Um, thanks to the government of Rwanda and uh, the Mastercard Foundation, 
the AIMS teacher training program has played a key role since its inception in January 2018 to support the training of secondary school teachers in mathematics and science. And uh, despite uh, this uh, COVID pandemic, the team has managed to train over 2,000 teachers through its online platforms by ensuring that quality mathematics and science education is uh, accessible to all. I observed your uh, excellent presentation and active uh, discussions. And there are so many uh, very interesting takeaways that uh, it's uh, very difficult to summarize them in a few minutes. But uh, some of the things that uh, really captured my attention, um, let me just uh, give uh, some of them. Uh, the, the first thing I heard here, and we are all uh, convinced that teaching and learning can happen everywhere by using uh, technology and not only in a physical setting. Another thing that uh, uh, I heard here is that this uh, difficult time of the pandemic also gave some opportunity to all of you to get new digital skills. And this is something uh, that uh, is really very important also for the future. And one of the panelists uh, also uh, outlined the key role of uh, technology and human interaction with uh, an emphasis to leverage teacher interaction within districts, the country, but also out of the country. And one other thing that I also heard, um, I think it was from uh, uh, Sam, is uh, a recommendation um, that uh, he was uh, requesting EMS to remain in touch, to stay in touch with teachers in, uh, during their journey. On this uh, specific uh, recommendation, I, I can really assure you that uh, this is really our uh, core mission with, uh, of course, the support of our uh, partners. So I would like to pay my deep respect to all of you, dear teachers, for your positive participation in uh, this seminar including uh, the 1,000, uh, over 1,000 MSTTP teacher community and other stakeholders who are following it online. I heard from Orin, Erin that uh, there are uh, 400 uh, who were connected on YouTube. So this is really uh, uh, impressive and uh, very, uh, it's uh, important to mention. And uh, last but not least, I want to take this opportunity to sincerely uh, thank our great partners, uh, Rwanda Education Board, Chansen International, and uh, ICDL for their continued support to teachers who have uh, successfully engaged in a number of online and remote teacher training during this period. I also want to recognize the presence of uh, the representative of uh, UNESCO. So thank you very much. And uh, to conclude, I just want to express my uh, gratitude to all of you for attending this seminar. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Professor Sam, and thank you once again to everybody for coming and sitting in patiently and being part of this. Uh, we are just getting very interesting photos coming from different parts of the country of the teachers who are following, some in their houses, some under the trees. But we really, really want to appreciate the effort that has been put. And all our other partners who are also watching, as I said, Dr. Marie um, Christine, who is also watching, just to clarify that she's from HEC. And she was watching in her capacity as a personal friend to AIMS, but also from, uh, uh, from the platform of HEC and not generally Ministry of Education. So I just want to say thank you very much. We are ending, and uh, this is just the beginning. As, as Professor Sam has said, our commitment is to continue to work with our teachers. As we go back to school, we are going back to a new normal, so we want to keep talking to one another so that whatever comes up, because many things are going to come up that we are not used to, we'll always be there to listen to one another, to share experiences, to learn from one another, and continue reflecting. And we're going back knowing that, yes, there are going to be difficulties and challenges as much as opportunities, but we are well armed because we have our signature spirit, which we're going to end with. Mawe karambe, mawe karambe, mama we. Mawe karambe, mawe karambe, mawe Mawe karambe, mawe karambe, mama we. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are going back with a spirit of resilience, hard work, and dedication to ensure that the quality teaching and learning of mathematics and sciences continues and with a commitment to continue tapping into technology to enable that to happen. So thank you very much. We're, now we are all welcome to give an elbow to each other because you can't greet uh, to recognize each other's presence. And uh, downstairs, we have some tea that has been served. For those of us who still have some time to spare, let's grab some tea, stand one meter away, and have a conversation with one another. Our pleasure, and we look forward to hosting you in another occasion. Thank you very much for all our key guests for coming. Thank you very much.